Hello everyone, this is Arun. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the FTP adapter to move files from one FTP server to the other. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I make videos on ERP Cloud, EPM, integrations, and analytics. If you want to see more videos on these topics, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So in the last video, guys, we saw how to use the REST API adapter to create a simple calculator API. We saw how to test it from the OCA console and also using Postman. Today, we're going to use the FTP adapter to connect to a source FTP server, read the files, move it to the target FTP server, and also archive the files in the source FTP server. All right, let's get started. So what do we need? We're going to need FTP or SFTP details, the username, password, hostname, port. We're going to need the source directory, the target directory, the archive directory information, and also the file name pattern that we have to use. We're going to use .csv files. So this is the source FTP server, and you can see I have three CSV files in the source directory. I also have an archive directory, and once the files have been moved to the target FTP server, the files from the source will be moved to the archive directory. All right. So first things first, let's log into integrations and go into connections. I already have created a connection to connect to my source FTP server or SFTP server. Now I'm going to go, go ahead and create a connection to connect to my target FTP server. So in your case, you, you're going to create two connections, one to connect to your source FTP server or SFTP server, and another one to connect to your target FTP or SFTP server. All right. So I'm going to create I'm going to create a connection to connect to the target FTP server here. Airage target FTP server. Click on create. This is going to be FTP dot port is 21. If you're using an SFTP server, the port number will be 22 and you can change the SFTP connection to yes. Scroll all the way down, uh, enter your username and password. So it's already auto populated here, but the username to connect to your FTP server and the password. Once you have done that, click on test and you can uh, click on test or diagnose and test. I'm going to click diagnose and test. If everything is fine, you're going to see a confirmation saying connection was tested successfully. Click on save and we're done. So make sure you create two connections, one to connect to your source FTP server and the other one to connect to your target FTP server. Let's go ahead and build the integration now. Click on integrations and I'm going to click on create. This is going to be a file transfer style integration. So select file transfer, click on select. Move files to FTP. All right, it's all good. Click on create. All right, first things first, let's change the layout to horizontal. All right, we have to set up these schedule parameters. So these Whenever the schedule runs, it's going to expect you to provide some parameters. And this is what we're going to use to identify the source directory, the target directory, archive directory, and the file name pattern. So let me define source directory. I will enter the correct values in a bit. So target directory. This is going to be the archive directory. And we have one more, which is the file name pattern. And this is going to be dot csv. All right, so let's go ahead and copy the Source. So this is the source directory. And 
and this is the archives. You can see archive and the out directory or the target directory is going to be out. Hopefully that works. We haven't tested this. All right, so we have set up the scheduled parameters. Next is to set up the connection to your source FTP server. Okay, I'm going to select the connection to the source FTP server. First thing we're going to do is list files. So we're going to look at the files in the directory, loop through each one of them, read the file, and write the file to the target FTP server and then move that file to the archive folder. So the first thing is list files. Don't have to worry about anything else. Here, the operation is going to be list files, and it expects two parameters, which is your input directory and your file name pattern. All right, click on next, and we're done. All right, so now we have the mapper. We're gonna map the schedule parameters to the input parameters of the list files operation. So click on the mapper, click on edit. Then expand the list request, expand FTP list header, and you're gonna see it is expecting two parameters, file name pattern and directory. And directory is the source directory. That's what we're gonna read from. And the file name pattern is the file name pattern. Okay, so that's mapped. Click on validate. All right, awesome. Click on close. Now, we need a for each loop to loop through the files within the directory. So we have a list files. Now we're going to loop through the files in that list. Right. All right, so click on actions here and you'll see for each loop. So drag and drop it here. Okay, what's the action name that you want to call this? So I'm going to say a list, I'm going to say read each file. So we need to provide the list of the files. And if you see on the left side, you'll see the list files operation here. There's a response, there's another response within that. If you expand that, you'll see file list object, expand file list object, click on load more, and you're gonna see a repeating element called file. So file list has a collection of files. And repeating element means this object repeats multiple times. All right, so if you hover over the icon, you can see that it has a special icon to indicate that it is a repeating element. And that is the repeating element that we need to provide here. So click on the file, repeating element, then click on the right arrow. Then we are done with that. So if you expand the file, you'll see all the properties of the file. We have the directory, file name, last modified chain, creation name, size. So for each file in that, um, in the loop, what do you want to call that? So current element name, current file name, what do you want to call it? Current record name, what do you want to call it? So I'm going to say current file. Click on create. All right, so we have a for each loop. Next thing you want to do is connect to the source directory and read the file. All right, again, connecting to the source directory, not to the target source. And we're going to read the file. So we're looping through the files, and then we're going to read each individual file. So the operation, what do you want to call the endpoint? I'm going to call this read file. Click on next. Select operation. What's the operation? Read a file. Here, I'm going to say input directory. This is going to be the file name. And click next. Uh, you can select no. If you want to learn more about these properties, let me know. I can create a separate video for that. But for now, just select no. Click next and click done. All right, now we have a mapper. So we're going to take the parameters or the values from the for loop or the uh, 
repeating element and then map it to the read file operation. So click on the mapper, click on edit. Okay, so expand file read request. Expects two parameters, the directory and the name. And the directory is the source directory, so map it. And the file name is, if you see the current file, that's what we uh, defined each file is going to be called as. Now, if you expand current file, you see file, and within there, you'll see the file name. So that's what we're going to map to here, and we're done. Click on validate, and close. Let me zoom out. Oh, that was cool. All right, so we're reading the file. Now we have to write the file to the target. So here, in the next step, we're going to use the target FTP connection adapter that we created. So click on plus. So in here, we're going to use the target, not the source target, because we're going to write it to the target. Here, I'm going to say write file. Don't worry about anything else. Click next. Here, I'm going to say write file. Just say target directory and file name. Don't have to worry about anything else here. Click on next. Select no for this. Click next and done. All right, now we have a mapper. So we're going to edit the mapper. All right, expand ICS file. Here on the right side, you're going to see file reference. So we have to have file reference from the read file response. So this is a read file response. Let's expand that. And you'll see an ICS file object and you'll see the file reference. So let's map it to file reference. That's cool. Now expand the FTP header type on the um, write file operation. You'll see it expects two more parameters, file name and directory. So this is your target directory in the target FTP server. Let's go ahead and map that target directory to directory and the file name. So file name is the same, expand current file and get the file name. All right, I think that is good enough. Validate. Awesome, the last step is to archive the file in the source directory itself. So the next step is to have we're going to use the source FTP connection and you can see archive file. All right, click next. So here it's going to ask for four parameters source directory source file name, target directory, target file name. All right, that you can select override file. In, a, in another video, I'm going to show you how to append the date uh, when you move the file. But for now, just go with this, click next, and click none. All right, let's click on the mapper, click on edit. You're going to see we need four parameters here. So we're going to say, what's the file name? File name is the file name. And we're going to keep the same file name for both source and target file name, right? All right, now we need the archive directory. That's the directory where we're moving the files to. And then the Oh, sorry, that's this directory is the target directory is the archive directory and this is the source directory. So we're going to take source directory and map it here. Awesome. I think we're good. Let me check the mapper for the right file one more time to make sure that I haven't missed anything. 
So we need a file name and directory and you have file reference and file name. So this looks good. All right, I think we're good. So let's go into the tracking info and select um, source directory, target directory, and use file name pattern. Click save. Ah. Delete this and then let drag and drop target directory. Target. Okay, click save. Save. Close. And click on activate. Enable tracing, include payload, activate and schedule. So you can either activate and then go ahead and schedule later, or you can schedule it right away. So I'm going to say modify state and date. So I'm going to say 344. Save. Now let's click on start schedule. It's going to ask you for their values. So this is the uh, scheduled parameters. So we have already provided the values. If you want to override, you can provide new values here. Select start schedule. All right, 3.43. So we have around 50 minutes, 50 minutes, 50 seconds to wait. Once that is done, we should see the file from the source. Uh, written to the target and also move to the archive directory. 30 more seconds. Now the status is going to change from wait to ready to running. 10 more seconds usually takes a little bit more time so you can see that the status has changed to ready and once um, and then it's going to change to running see it's changed to running give it like uh, 40 to 50 seconds close to a minute all right it's completed so let's go check our source directory so that's our source so that's gone from the source let's go to the archive you can see that the files have been moved to the archive directory. Now let's go check out the target directory. Hopefully everything went well and you can see the files there. And you can see that the files from the source has been moved to the target and also it has been archived in your source FTP server directory. So that is as easy as how to transfer files from FTP servers between FTP servers using Oracle Integration Cloud. No code written, right? It's a drag and drop, setting the parameters, setting the schedule. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. and Also, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, I do have a podcast. It's called Oracle Cloud Bytes. Make sure to listen to the podcast and let me know your feedback and suggestions. If you want to be in the podcast, I'll be happy to have you. Check out my other videos on Oracle Integration Cloud, OTPI, and EPM. Follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn. If you're on Cloud Customer Connect Forum, I'll be happy to connect with you. I wish you all a great weekend ahead. I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.